Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley at sprinkledwithglitter.com. Thanks for joining me today. Today I am sharing two card designs which feature subtle floral backgrounds and I'm featuring some brand new products from Alta New. These products are brand new for their April 2024 monthly release and it includes this bouquet of poppies stamp and coordinating stencil and die set. This is like the biggest stamp I have ever seen. This entire stamp set measures like eight by 11 or something crazy. And it has some individual images, some sentiments, as well as that huge poppy bouquet design, which I think is so gorgeous. There are also coordinating dies for some of the standalone images, like the butterflies and the two kind of single poppies. And there's also a stencil set that will stencil the large poppies as well as that large bouquet of poppies and the butterflies and a couple of the stems. And there's a guide inside of this packaging that shows you how to use this. So it's really smart to hold on to this. Now, in addition to that product suite, I will also be using this Timeless Sentiments 2 die set for my sentiment. It has some great, big, bold sentiments along with the shadow dies. And I'm gonna be using all of these products on both cards today, but I wanna show you how I'm gonna use that giant, larger than life stamp. Now, if you're someone who does scrapbooking and you wanted to create a background on a scrapbook page, this stamp would be perfect for it, but I am using it on an A2 size card today. So you can see I'm using my stamp wheel to stamp this onto my A2 size card. So this panel measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm just kind of arranging this because this is actually just gonna create the background for my card. Now, once I have it in position, I'm gonna use the flip plate that comes with the stamp wheel to pick that up. So you can see I'm just positioning it with the hole towards the top of the stamp wheel because that way I know where I'm going to place my flip plate when I go to stamp it onto my card front. And I'm just making sure I rub all over the surface of this so that I pick up that large stamp. Then I can take this and flip it over. I'm gonna set it right back inside of my stamp wheel base and I'm gonna ink it up with a soft gray ink. Now this is kind of a warm gray. You could also use like a pale pink or you could use a darker color and possibly stamp it off once before you stamp it onto your background. But I just really want this to add to the card in a very subtle way. So this is going to cover a lot of my background, but it's not gonna take up a lot of visual space because I'm using a lighter color. Now, you can see that the stamp actually overlaps the outer ring or the outer frame of my stamp wheel, but because the flip plate is a little bit flexible, I'm able to push that stamp down and make contact with the entire A2 size cardstock here. Now, if my cardstock went edge to edge, I might not get stamping on the very edge of this. So you might wanna use a larger stamp positioner, or you could even lay it face up on your surface and take your card stock to the stamp, just like you would a background stamp to stamp this instead. Now I wanna use a couple of the individual images from this bouquet of poppy stamp set as well. So I have another piece of white cardstock here. I'm mounting it into my stamp wheel. And if you're not familiar with the stamp wheel, it actually has a photopolymer grid piece in there. So it's holding my cardstock in place while I get everything positioned and while I stamp my images. I'm also going to be using it for my stenciling because it will help hold my stencil in place as well as my ink pads. And I'll show that here in just a moment. So I'm using again this soft gray ink and stamping it onto my cardstock that's mounted into my stamp wheel. And these will be the images that are kind of more my focal images. So I will end up die cutting and stenciling these. Now I wanna point something out on the stamp set. Do you see how there is a letter associated with some of these images? That helps you to kind of guide you with the stencil set. So there are several stencils in the set, but if you open up your guide and I find that letter E, it shows me how the stencil is laid out and what layers are in the particular stencil to kind of ink this image up. So I'm starting out by aligning the stencil that will ink up my leaves and I am going to grab Frayed Leaf Fresh Dye Ink from Altenew 
And I'm using the small Altenew blending brushes. I really like these. They have kind of a flat head, which is different than most blending brushes, but I find that I get great control with these. And my rule of thumb is, if you want a lot of control over your shading, a smaller brush is generally gonna be your friend. If you're just trying to get a large layer of color down, then you can use a larger blending brush because you don't need the same amount of control. But keep in mind, this stencil has several images on the same stencil, and some of them are very close together. So by using a small blending brush, I can control where my ink goes, and I don't need to mask off some of the other images that are on the stencil and stay within, you know, my inking boundaries. <laughs> So for the details of the leaves, I'm using the Altenew Evergreen Fresh Dye Ink, and I'm gonna ink that on. Now, this will actually ink up the stem as well, but I did not want a large amount of this dye or this darker dye ink on my stem. I just kind of wanted the details of the leaves to be dark. So I am just going in with a lot of control and just inking up kind of the details of the leaves and the middle part of that stem. And there is kind of a big gap between that frayed leaf and the evergreen inks that I'm using. And when I pulled up my stencil, I was like, mm, I think there's too much contrast. So I went back to the first stencil and placed that onto my image again. And I'm gonna blend over some of this with forest glades to kind of bring the two colors together. It's kind of like when you're using alcohol ink markers and sometimes you need that medium color to kind of bring the two colors together because there's too much contrast. This is the same thing here. So once I blend that medium color on, you can see I don't have quite as much contrast. I was much happier with the look. And now I'm going to move on to inking the flower image. Now something I wanted to point out here is you can see how that sticky grid in my stamp wheel is holding my paper in place and it's also holding my stencil in place as I do my inking. But you can see I also have my ink pad up there in the corner where it's grabbing a little bit of that photopolymer mat and it's holding my stamp pad in place as I do my inking as well. So I'm able to kind of hold all of my tools in place and not worry about things shifting as I'm doing my inking. I do wanna mention that recently I have been making sure that I wipe my stencil down before I either, number one, move on to a new color or number two, before I remove it. I'm finding that I get less smudges and I have less accidents <laughs> if I clean up a little bit after myself before I kind of move on to the next step. So once I have that done, I'm gonna go ahead, like I said, and clean up after myself a little bit, and I'm gonna shift my stencil around to the other two petals of the flower here. And I'm going to use the same colors again. I'm using blush and peachy keen. This makes for a really beautiful corally pink color in the end. I love mixing like peachy colors with pale pinks. It really gives you some beautiful, unique shades. It's great for like sunsets as well. But because they're next to each other, pink kind of in that red family and orange next to each other on the color wheel, they blend beautifully. So I'm just adding a little bit of ink blending. You can see on this ink blending, I am not taking full color to the edge of the petals. I'm really creating a lot of variation in the coloring by just doing a little bit of color towards the center and allowing it to kind of fade out. So now that I have the ink blending done on my images, I'm taking this over to my die cut machine and I'm using the coordinating dies to die cut this beautiful poppy shape and also this beautiful butterfly. And for my sentiment, I thought I would kind of tie it into that floral. And so I'm bringing in the rouge color, which I used on my butterfly. And I'm also bringing in the blush color. And I have a couple of different sizes of brushes to do my blending here. For the rouge, I'm using a, a medium size blending brush from Altenew. And for the blush, I'm using a really large blending brush because I'm trying to get a lot of color down. I am allowing for some variation in that, but you can see this beautiful blend that I have. Now I'm going to take the Have a Good Day die. This is from the Timeless Sentiments 2 die set. I'm going to die cut it from that ink blended piece and the shadow die I'm going to die cut from some vellum. 
Now, I also die cut the have a good day words from some plain white cardstock and stacked those up to give my die cut a little bit of dimension here. And I'm just adding that ink blended die cut on top of those stacked die cuts. I'm going to do a lot of die cut stacking today because this card is so simple. I really want the elements to carry a lot of weight. And so by adding a couple of stacked up plain white die cuts behind the flower, behind the butterfly and behind the sentiment, it really makes those kind of come to the forefront. It's a great way to add dimension. It will add a little bit of bulk to your cards, but if if you don't know me, <laughs> I have a saying and it's, I like big cards and I cannot lie. So that's what we do around here. We add a little dimension. We're not afraid of it, but of course you could always um, step this back just a little bit. So once I have my die cut stacked up, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere my poppy onto that subtle floral background that I created with that big old stamp. <laughs> I'm adding that with liquid glue. I did add a little tiny bit of foam adhesive behind my sentiment and behind my butterfly just to give a little variation there. And I used this brush gold cardstock from Alta New to create a mat for my card front. Now for my card base, I have a piece of ivory cardstock. It's cut to five and a half by eight and a half inches. I'm scoring it at four and a quarter inches to create an A2 size card. I am doing a vertical card here. And I'm doing a side fo folding vertical. Now for a long time, I was doing top folding verticals and I still do that, but I'm just really into the side folding vertical right now. So that's what we're going with. <laughs> so I use my tape runner to adhere this brushed gold cardstock onto my card base. You can see I have a really thin framed margin there. I think it's about an eighth of an inch all the way around. I'm just getting that adhered right there in the center. And for the card front, I'm going to add that on to my card base using some foam adhesive because once again, I like big cards and I cannot lie. <laughs> you other brothers can't deny. Okay, we'll move on. To add a little bit of sparkle to this card, I'm just going to use a aqua shimmer pen and I'm just adding a little bit of sparkle to the center of the flower as well as kind of the mid part of the butterfly so right along the body and along some of those lines that are created by the stamp and that finishes off card number one a beautiful soft subtle floral background using the biggest stamp that i've ever seen but i was kind of in the craft room i was feeling the groove and so i thought i would go ahead and make a second card featuring this beautiful bouquet of poppies set. So I went ahead and ink blended another piece of cardstock using that rouge and blush inks just like I did to die cut the actual sentiment die before. Now I'm going to use the shadow die to die cut this ink blended piece and this is going to be the background for my sentiment and I'm going to use some white cardstock for the letters. So this is kind of a little bit of a reversal. It's kind of using the same thing in a different way, but kind of doing the negative of it, I guess. Before I had the vellum shadow layer, this time I am using this ombre ink blended shadow layer. And once again, I did stack up a couple or a few layers of those plain white die cuts to give my sentiment some dimension. Now we're gonna pull out the big old stamp again and we're inking it up with that soft gray ink. Again, we're creating a really subtle floral background for my focal points to kind of sit on. It gives some texture and some more elements to the card without it being overwhelming. But this time I'm gonna die cut this background into a circle. And I'm gonna use the circle as kind of the base for my focal images. So I'm using a circle die to die cut that out. And then I'm just gonna keep the card really simple from here on out. I'm using that brushed gold cardstock once again. I have just a thin strip of that across my ivory card base at an angle. I applied that with some liquid glue. Then I trimmed off the excess and now I'm using some foam adhesive to adhere my focal image here with that soft floral background, the sentiment and a little butterfly there. Now I love that both of these cards kind of show the same very simple technique, a way that you can use large florals like this on a card without doing all of the ink blending on them. They kind of create that background for you. It gives a lot of beautiful texture and some more elements to the card, like I mentioned, without it being overwhelming. 
Now, as always, I will have links to the featured products used in these projects in the description at YouTube. So if you're looking for something in particular, be sure you check there. Or you can head on over to my blog at sprinkledwithglitter.com. I'll have that linked below as well. Over there, you'll find more still shots, more information, and a complete list of supplies. Now, I also wanted to mention that this video, this project is a part of an Instagram hop celebrating the 10th anniversary of Altenew as well as their April monthly release. So head on over to my Instagram there to see more inspiration featuring the April 2024 release from Altenew and enter to win prizes as well. They're giving away a $100 gift card, y'all. You don't want to miss this. <laughs> As always, I want to say thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me today. I am so glad you're here. I hope you enjoyed these projects and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications here so you don't miss any of the paper crafting and card making video tutorials I share. Thanks again for watching and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.